one of the categories of alleged contradictions that skeptics can lay against the Bible are contradictions of doctrinal sorts, ideas that don't go together. And oftentimes, uh, professing Christians can fall into this and say things like, well, those are your verses and these are my verses and so on. One of the most infamous examples of this is the alleged tension between Paul and James. And I'm speaking specifically about Paul's words in Romans 3.28, or you can take Galatians 2.16 and 17, or Philippians 3.8 and 9, but any of those classical justification by faith alone passages, versus in particular James 2.24. On the one hand, Paul is saying that we are justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Luther, when he was um, translating the Bible into German, uh, used the word alone there. And of course, Rome lost their lunch over that because the word alone is not there in the Greek, and that's true. But their trouble is not that they misunderstood Greek, it was that they misunderstood the law of the excluded middle, or at least fail to apply it in that situation. Because, you see, if justification is either by faith alone or by something else, i.e. the works of the law, and the one is excluded, well, then the other is retained alone. So, Luther was right to do that. But then what about James? Roman Catholics, to this day, will put James up against Paul as if they're doing one of those, those are your verses, those are my verses, you know, without any sense that they're making the Bible contradict the Bible, making James contradict Paul. Well, what is James talking about? Well, if you look at the context and you read the whole section through, you realize that whereas Paul's context was the courtroom, that is how one is made right before God judicially, that justification means being made right with God, not only forgiven of all of your sins, but declared righteous. But it has to be with the very righteousness of God, and that's what Paul says to the Philippians. Whereas in James, it's talking about as one is walking out of the courtroom, in the realm of sanctification, evidence, demonstrating. We talk like that all the time. It's actually not weird at all we justify truth claims. We say that so-and-so is justified. Can you justify that statement or can you justify what you did? And so what are we saying? We're saying, can you evidence that? Can you demonstrate that? Can you prove that? Well, Matt, can you prove that that was what James was talking about? Yes. In fact, open up your Bible to James chapter 2 and you will plainly see it. Any honest reader will look at this and see that if we start at verse 18... James says, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me, that's the operative word, what is he doing? Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. So the scripture was fulfilled that said, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Isn't that interesting? James quotes the same Genesis 15, 6 that Paul quotes in Romans. He's well aware of the meaning of that judicially. And he is saying that, yes, you start with that. However, you are not real. You are not genuine. Your faith is just a said faith, a claimed faith, if it does not walk itself out. As Luther said to the charges of antinomianism when Rome started to make that charge, he said, yes, we do believe that you're justified by faith alone, but not by a faith that is alone, not that remains alone. And so it goes on to say that he was called a friend of God. You see, and this is where James concludes, that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received 
the messengers and sent them out another way. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. The issue there is clearly showing your faith. It is a demonstration of, evidencing out. It's a different subject matter than Paul's subject matter. You say, well, uh, is, it, is it the same word? It is the same word. But it is also the same word in Luke 7.29, where it says that the crowds justified God, that is, declared God righteous. Did God need to walk into the courtroom of man and have man slam down his gavel and forgive God and declare God right with the righteousness that man has in himself? I don't think anybody wants to have that position. And yet, here's the same Greek word from the Dikaio word group. You know, in English, we have two words for this, right and just, depending on the context. But in Greek, and the same thing in Hebrew as well, they had two different words for it. But in the Greek, it was just that Dikaio word group. So, Dikaio uh, sune theo, the righteousness of God. Uh, some form or another of that word is being used in all these contexts. So you can't go just to the word by itself. It is used in different ways, just like in English we use the same word. I just use the examples of justified in, in several different ways. So context, 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 and remember, if you claim to be a Christian at all, you believe that this is one divinely inspired book written by a perfect author who never contradicts himself. So just remember that when you're playing fast and loose with those are your verses, these are my verses.